Hello, my name's Chris. I'm a composer. I've been around for a little while and I've been writing for various things. Um, uh, and I thought I'd make my first little video on template related stuff. Now there's a lot on YouTube already and uh, what I want to do with this is not preach to the choir, so to speak, so not say stuff that's already been talked about which uh, extensively um, but hopefully offer something new um, and uh, I want to address a question to start with uh, that a lot of composers face when starting to build their template and that question is do I create a Cubase scoring template with uh, instrument tracks, instrument tracks or with rack instruments and connecting to those rack instruments via MIDI tracks. Um, there's benefits and downsides to both ways. Um, and uh, Vienna Ensemble Pro, from my understanding and experience and from observing how other people use the software, um, is best connected to via using a rack instrument um, or a uh, plug-in and then connecting to that rack instrument with MIDI tracks. One of the major benefits of using an instrument track is that it contains pretty much everything that you need, especially in terms of the audio output and everything you might need in regards to the audio processing of that output. For example, EQ, insert effects, uh, adjusting the sends and the audio fader for that output of that instrument. If and obviously if you hit the keyboard shortcut for bring up instrument, that'll happen for both methods. Um, but with MIDI, um, tracks connected to a rack instrument, if you push your inspector button, uh, I don't actually have it here, but I've got a keyboard short, shortcut for it. Uh, you don't get the audio output of that track. You get a lot of the MIDI inserts and sends. Uh, you got the MIDI fader which if it's set to zero uh, initially, that means it won't actually send any information from this fader. Um, yeah, so you don't get any of the audio stuff, which is really great to have when, you've, when you're making a template with instrument tracks. And it takes, like, I'll, I could be playing something. It's like, ah, oh, shit, the low mid-range of that is really loud. I can just go like that and then continue playing. I don't have to leave the instrument. I don't have to trawl through a big mixer to find where it is. Um, and this is also, I guess, similar to if you're in a recording studio and you're working with an engineer who's used to adjusting the EQ or the reverb or whatever of uh, mic channels on the way in to Pro Tools or Door or whatever. Um, this way is a bit similar. So you could actually be jamming with the instruments, make your quick adjustments, then go back to actually playing them in. You can't do that as much with a MIDI track. You can, however, go down to this part of the inspector and provided you've routed this with the corresponding audio output, you can access your inserts, you can access your strip here, um, the EQ, or you can even hit the E, and that should. Yes, it did this time. I have had experience with this actually not working a lot, um, so I've actually pre-routed the corresponding audio output on this left inspector thing for all my MIDI channels, and for some reason, I don't know if it's the particular order I did things or I, I missed a step in the process, but it just wouldn't bring up the right channel or this would this routing here would reset and it would be really annoying. So um, I've had to find another way to quickly access the audio output of or the VST, I should be saying VST output of any given instrument track. And I've come up with a solution. Um, and uh, I guess let's have a look at it. Let's bring up the full template. Um, so obviously this doesn't apply to these because these are instrument tracks. For some reason I always keep my pianos on the master PC. I've got a slave with the majority of instruments here. 
um, routing through VE Pro. But um, yeah, so the way I've done it is this. So if I bring up the MIDI and then hit the down arrow key, I'm at the audio output of that channel. So how did I do that? Um, essentially what I've done is this. And I've got um, keyboard shortcuts to change my different views. Actually, I wanted that one. Uh, it takes a while. Okay, so essentially what I've done, it's pretty straightforward, and I'm sure people have thought of this or done this, um, but I couldn't find anywhere online where this has been done, so I'm hoping this could be useful information to anyone who's interested. Um, I've put the VST outputs next to the MIDI tracks, and I've called the VST outputs A for audio, basically, and that's pretty much it. So that looks really confusing at the moment. There's a lot of white lines and it, it's a um, pain to look at but um, if we go back to just the MIDI tracks obviously those audio outputs are still in between all these tracks but they're hidden um, and if I'm playing away on good old Symphobia terrible but um, and I need to quickly change make an adjustment to the EQ I'm still controlling the MIDI channel of that Symphobia patch I can hold the sustain pedal down because I don't like these frequencies around here I want more of a console you know, sort of sound without actually loading the console you know, patch for example um, and that's it it's done and I can still keep playing this is a game changer for me. I've needed to be able to do this for so long. Um, and uh, I've always jumped between having a slave PC with VE Pro or just having VE Pro on the master. Jump between that and just making a template with instrument tracks because I've, I've been fed up with not being able to quickly get to the EQ or the sends or the inserts of any given track but now I can with that system now I guess the question is now how do you quickly get to see the automation that's pretty straightforward I always have the visibility pane open so whenever I have any given track selected I go over to my visibility pane pa pane oh, I don't know um, and I can, it, it always scrolls to the selected channel. So if I'm all the way down here, it'll jump. And there it is, it's at the top. If I want to do some crazy automation with the output of Symphobia Woodwind Staccato Short, I click on the, the next track to make it visible. And there it is. Um, so it obviously makes it bigger. And because this is selected, uh, my Touch OSC sort of this controls the selected channels volume pan um that's pretty much it at this point our oh, quick controls although i haven't done anything with quick controls um yeah i can you know automate the volume of that channel say there's some musical content in here the downside to this is if i move if you're doing a lot of work with film um and you have to move a lot of musical content around and you want to want the automation stuff to follow um, you can't just do that and the automation won't follow. I've looked into trying to find ways to group automation and, and, and um, these container things and it's impossible. So you have to do this, unfortunately. But if you stick to a simple rule, and that rule is if there is ever automation for any given instrument in the template, always have the audio output of that instrument showing. That's the rule I stick to, and it seems to, to work for me. It might not work for some people. Another solution to this, uh, this problem is, or, or if this gets too messy, is you can actually have a folder at the top of any given section, say Woodwind's audio outputs, and then have all of the VST outputs for that section at the top. You just open the folder, there it is. Mix, done mixing, close the folder. But I need my my way of working is I need this um, and I can give some you know reverb to whatever channel it is and and also I've 
this is probably something for a different video, but um, I've been getting into the uh, Native Instruments and Softube collaborations recently, especially these <clears throat> um, uh, reverb things. Um, yeah, this is definitely another video, but being able to just edit the uh, reverb settings for that particular category um, to bring it up and not still not whoops I did something crazy there but still not having to leave that instrument oh yeah the other thing the other, the thing is if you have the instrument inspector open you change the channel and then you hit the down arrow key it won't go to the audio output for some reason you have to have it selected hit your keyboard shortcut for the inspector and then hit down then it'll, it'll work um and I'm, I'm, I believe this works in Windows 10. As you can see, I'm still on Windows 7. Um, I'm in the middle of a project. I can't upgrade just yet. But I have tested out some stuff of mine on Windows 10, and I believe this works. So thanks for listening. That's pretty much everything I wanted to chat about. Um, if you're interested in more, uh, I guess, tips and tutorials like this in future, uh, I hope to be making some more videos like this. Uh, so please subscribe, and um, uh, we'll get that stuff to you. So I hope you enjoyed and uh, see you next time. Bye.